Hi everyone, this is Introduction to SAS 6, and this is the third lesson of a series of six lessons on using statistics within SAS. So let's go ahead and get started. Before you dive into linear regression, a really great descriptive statistics and great graphing that you can do to better understand your data is actually to do a scatter plot. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm going to go put ODS graphics on, put the width as 1000, put image map equal to on, and then we're going to use proc S SG scatter. And then as well, we're going to be using the SAS data cars data, which come default in SAS. And we're going to be plotting MSRP by horsepower by using the X, uh, not the explanation mark, the, the, amber, the uh, asterisk. And we're going to be plotting a regression line across it so we can see what it looks like. You can see here the regression line looks like there's a linear relationship, which makes sense as you expect as more as you have more horsepower, you expect the price to go up as well. And to complement that, what we're going to do here is we're going to develop a, uh, what we call a cor pairwise correlation ma matrix. So here we're going to be using SAS help again. In this case, we're going to be using the shoes data and we're going to be plotting the matrix data and we're going to include all numeric variables and then as well in the middle of each pairwise correlation we're going to be putting a histogram so here I can go var and I'm going to use this underscore numeric underscore which is basically going to give me all the numeric variables rather than just typing them out and you'll see up here it tells you actually quite a bit it tells you the different variables that were included a bunch of descriptive statistics on the variables and as well I'll tell you here what's the Pearson correlation between the both well, p-values for each of these uh, relationships so what's the relationship between sales and store sales and inventory and as well uh, so it shows you a lot of really great statistics that are there and as well the the R R the R value the <laughs> the R adjusted R the R squared uh, for each of these values as well you can see how significant the relationship is and obviously the R squared between sales and sales is going to be one and as well you can see here the scatter plot you can see a lot of like strong linear relationships between these different variables which makes sense store number of stores and sales to obviously be correlated hopefully and then as well you'll see here a histogram all of all the different values which is actually really useful and really helpful so that's good and before we move on to the next one, let's go to help and go learn SAS programming. Press OK. It's going to load a bunch of different SAS data sets into a bunch of different libraries. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on the ACT library and we're going to be focusing on this fitness data set. And what I want to know is what the relationship between runtime is and these different variables that were collected for this particular purpose. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So before I actually want to do what I want to do is actually get an understanding of the relationship. I'm actually going to do that correlation there. Uh, I'm going to create the matrix and see the relationship, which will give me an understanding of what's happening here. You can see quite a bit, quite a bit of analysis has already been done. You'll see here, for example, oxygen consumption has a negative R squared. Uh, which tells me that there's a negative linear relationship and it's pretty close to negative one which tells me there's a pretty strong relationship you can see the p-values are significant so you can see there that there so that's good that's usually a good sign you can see performance pretty similar uh, which again performance probably runtime is probably a factor into performance so obviously there's some uh so obviously an obvious relationship there that we probably wouldn't want to explore so it looks like oxygen is what we're gonna create our regression against for runtime. So here I'm going to go proc reg data equals act fitness plot, uh, not, not plots. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then as well, we're going to develop our model, which is runtime equals to oxygen consumption. And we're going to run that. So you'll see here a whole bunch of different values are plotted 
you're going to see up here the number of observations used, number of observations read. You can see that the, the p values are below our alpha 0 0.05. As well, the t values are, are fairly high estimated uh, parameters, parameter estimates. And as well, you can see the r squared is 0.74, which is actually like pretty, pretty high, which is good. Uh, and as well, you can see a whole bunch of different variables here. And you can see that obviously that this is a, this is a simple linear regression. So if this is significant down here, it's probably like pretty likely that's significant up here as well. So that's good. Um, as well, you can see a whole bunch of different diagnostics of it, the predicted values of all the residuals, which is good. We don't see a clear relationship. There's values above and below. Maybe there's a little bit too many values above, but still uh, no, nothing too concerning you can see here the qq plot it's pretty close to the diagonal line as well you'll see here this uh, histogram and the normal bell curve it's pretty closely related so that's good um, and we go down here you'll actually see the linear relationship uh, plotted which is basically just a scatter plot with the li regression line linear regression line and as well this blue box is the confidence interval uh, confidence um, interval which tells us when that we expect 95 percent of the time that the mean of a particular oxygen consumption is going to fall within this for the runtime based off a given oxygen consumption is going to fall within this blue line and you'll see here these dotted lines these are basically the prediction limits and this basically gives you the prediction interval for any single point and the reason why it's much larger of a range than for example, the confidence interval is because the confidence interval is based off of the mean of all the consumption, oxygen consumptions for uh, all the run times for a given oxygen consumption, while the prediction limit is actually for a single point, which is going to have a higher variability, which, which obviously makes sense. So that's the basics of linear regression. Obviously, you can do a multi-linear regression and do a polynomial linear regression for a, for a multi-linear regression you can add in other variables so for example let me take a look at this table here for example if you want to add in rest pulse all you have to do here is type it beside and click rest pulse and then rerun this model and you're gonna see all the different relationships that are plotted against there so I'm going to leave it like at that. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.